All right, so today our, our big topic is going to be where we'll talk about Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is this website, another social network where we can share content. But the big draw about Pinterest, let's go to Pinterest.com. The big draw about Pinterest is that it's very visual. It's got a heavy focus on, on visuals, on pictures. So let's go to your web browser and let's go to Pinterest.com. Pinterest.com. And so Pinterest.com is this a social network where you might get a different message here. At the beginning, as a little preview, mine says, he used Pinterest to explore new campsites. Maybe yours said, they use Pinterest to give their kids a head start. Maybe it also said, they use Pinterest to plan a dream trip. Join Pinterest to find all the things that inspire you. So Pinterest started off a few years ago uh, as a way for people to share pictures, um, to share visual and uh, something visually interesting, like this pin board right up here. This is Pinterest in the Stone Age. This is an actual board, and we pin stuff. Pinterest. And so the digital version is we can pin pictures, we can pin animations, we can pin video. So it's more multimedia. And so you might have your own inspiration board at home. You know, people have that where they, their goal is that they're going to one day go on a dream trip. So they pin a picture of, of the palm trees and they pin uh, a goal monetarily. They pin stuff to inspire them to reach that goal. Uh, people might pin things that they enjoy, right? Pictures of their family. And then people get enjoyment out of sharing that with their friends and family that, that come over. So very similar then, Pinterest is just a digital version of that. People sign up, they create a free account, they add pictures, video, etc. And so more these examples here should be giving you more of an idea of why would people have a Pinterest. So if I refresh again, maybe another... He used Pinterest to start his rooftop oasis. Join Pinterest to find all the things that inspire you. So this person was pinning pictures of that flower and this um, uh, planting technique and all of those things that he needed to start his rooftop oasis. And sometimes those things that people pin might be products. I want that natural, organic fertilizer when I start my garden. If you are a company then that sells natural organic fertilizer and you're on Pinterest and active, your product could be pinned by people and some amount of people that then see that product could say, I need that product. I want to buy that product. Let me go to that website. So that's one scenario for you as a business. You're putting your products on Pinterest, nice pictures of your product, videos of your product. You're putting a presence on Pinterest. And people, as we'll see how they do it, search Pinterest, find interesting things. They find your interesting thing and pin it on their board. And for some amount of people, that's it. They just pin your picture, they're done, they move on, they do other things. But for some amount of people, that'll stick in their head. And when they need that product on their Pinterest, they will be able to click on your pin to go to your website, to buy your product, to sign up for your newsletter, to donate to your nonprofit, to book you as an artist, whatever. You're building an audience on Pinterest that is full, that is that has hundreds of millions of users. I don't know the exact value at the moment, but probably a hundred to two hundred million users, something like that. Lots and lots of users globally. And one of the great things about Pinterest is, especially if your target audience <coughs> is women, Pinterest is one of the best places to get on board. Uh, statistics show that the larger demographic in Pinterest uh, is women. So if your product is female-friendly, targeted to women, etc., Pinterest would be a good place to get on because the majority of people that use Pinterest are women. So another example, she used Pinterest to think outside the classroom. So I suppose here an instructor set up a pin board with their students to teach them 
something. She pins pictures of the uh, tectonic plates and the solar system and all of that, and the kids see that and learn about it. And so if I was uh, some sort of instructor as well, having tutorials about science and the like, I could pin my science photos, my science videos on Pinterest, and then she might find them and pin them to her board and have her students see it, and then that could bring more traffic to my website. So we'll see various use, use case scenarios, but let me show you a more concrete example. Up on the address bar, let's go to pinterest.com slash Mashable. M-A-S-H-A-B-L-E, Mashable. I mentioned this last month, I believe, right? Mashable.com. Mashable.com is a, a, a great website where you can learn more about social media and uh, technology and such. And they have a presence on all the networks. They're on Pinterest, they're on YouTube, they're on uh, Facebook and, and, and Twitter. They're on all of these social networks where the people are at. Once they have an audience on those social networks and they pin something, they add, <coughs> they add something to Pinterest, they have more exposure on Pinterest. And then someone could follow that link back to their website. You might pin a snippet of your tutorial on Pinterest. And then in, that entices people to come back to your website for the full tutorial. And then at the end of your tutorial, you've got something to sell, let's say. So you're going to see things that are related or familiar to other social <coughs> networks, but then unique to Pinterest. Uh, we saw last month we had the concepts of like and share and comment and such. We have that also on Pinterest, which I'll explain in detail. But the big difference of Pinterest also is that you have this way to organize your content. When you tweet, you just tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet, and it's a long string of tweets. If someone wants to see a tweet related to something from a while ago, they might need to search or keep scrolling back to find it. Same thing with Facebook. You can't organize very well. Google Plus has some organization. We didn't quite get to it, but Google Plus has collections. So if you look at collections on Google Plus, that's a way to organize your content. Pinterest built in has a way to organize. Everything that we add to Pinterest is called a pin. Just like on that pin board, we can pin something onto it. And what if I have a pin board about vacation and a pin board about um, family and a pin board about work? Well, same thing here. This is a board about tech and gadgets, about infographics, about the best apps tips and tricks for social media. So Mashable is posting a variety of content about <coughs> technology, tips and tricks, and so forth. And it's kind of much more aggressive, which is annoying in a classroom. But nowadays, they, they really want you to log in. So uh, ignore that for the moment. Uh, we'll do this together. But let's say I want to see what's on this tips and tricks board. Notice it has 154 pins. This one's got 237. This has got 2,400. So they're pinning things. They're organizing content. Pictures, video, tutorials, links, etc. And up at the top it says they've got 57 boards. 57 ways they've organized their content. And then 13,000 pins. So they're adding stuff to their account all the time probably the whole team of like three or five people working on this company doing this full time. The purpose of that, adding content here again, is to drive the traffic back to their website. At their website then they could sell a product, they could get you to subscribe to a newsletter, etc. We'll talk about likes, following, and followers, but they've got 1.4 million followers. So even if 1% of those one and a half million followers pay attention, that's still a lot of people that could potentially follow through with what Pinterest is trying to do. Let's say what I'm trying to do is get new people to hire me as a graphic designer. So as I keep posting on Pinterest and getting followers, many are not going to follow through and hire me, but some will. 
And it's a numbers game in that the more we do, the more potential we have of getting followers and then people that actually become conversions, which means people that actually buy my product, subscribe to my newsletter, hire me, whatever you want, whatever, their, whatever the main goal is. But it doesn't work if, you don't, if you're not social. That's the social in social media, if you're not active. So let's say I do look at um, tips and tricks social media. You can click on a board. Again, it'll bother you to log in and such. We'll do that in a moment. And this is a particular board. This has this board itself has 103,000 followers. So you can follow every board from a profile or just the ones you care about. Like I don't care about that one called infographics. I don't even know what an infographic is. I don't care about the one of technology, but I care about this one of social media. So I can choose to follow individual boards or the whole account with all their boards. You can be judicious about that. So this has got 154 pins, 103 followers. So I'm going to see smartphone photography tricks to up your Instagram game. So I see a picture that catches my attention, perhaps. It says this came from Mashable. Who pinned it? Mashable pinned it. Uh, the little title there, preview of the title, and then a preview of the actual article. Cooperative of Photography shared their favorite do-it-yourself tips to get the most out of your smartphone's camera. Then there's an icon here. This vaguely looks familiar, like Twitter. Do you remember on Twitter we had that like spinning arrow icon? Um, this is to repin. This is if I've got an account which we'll create together, I like this enough that I want to share it from my account. Just like I can share on Twitter, which is a retweet, I can share on Google+, I can share on Facebook. I find something and I want my followers to see it, I can share it. They call it here to repin but it's the same idea, to share. So that's been repinned 34 times. As we saw previously, the point of getting shares is that I might have 10 followers, but if a few of my followers share my content, I've actually reached more. I've reached the followers of the followers, the friends of the friends. So I want to get shares to spread my message further than I could have just by to my first degree of followers. My content could go to followers of followers, friends of friends. It's got the heart, which is just their, uh, their icon or their term for the like. On Facebook you like, on Twitter you favorite, on Google Plus you plus one, and then on um, Pinterest you, you heart it or you like it. So this has got 11 hearts. And it doesn't show it here, obviously, but it does have also the ability to comment. People can comment. And although that is the social in social media. Yes? There's no difference. That's just the icon. The icon is there to show you that um, this has been repinned. You just mean this one, right? Yeah, so it's it's the same one icon. The great thing that I like about Pinterest is that it has automatic attribution. That's just a fancy way of saying that if you pin something from your website, it automatically has a link back to your website. Whereas if you added a picture from your website into Twitter, it might not have a link back to your website automatically. If you add something on Facebook from your website, it might not automatically have a link back to your website. Pinterest has it built in, and we'll see how to do it, of course, that if we share a picture from your website, it will automatically come with a link back to your website. So if you forget to put the link that says read more, it will do it for you, in a sense. So I want to read more of this. I should be able to click if 
I log in, of course, uh, to take me back to the back to the website, back to the main. See, it says visit website. If it lets you try this, any one of these that you see, click on one. You might get the magnifying glass or, or the finger, but click on any one of those. Any one of those <coughs> pins. Again, if this pops up to bother you, just try to refresh the screen. We'll log in in a moment. But anyway, there's the there's the pin completely. Uh, it's got the text and such. And then uh, at the top, it says visit site. So it's got it built in. If you never added it yourself, but you shared it the way I'm going to show you, it will automatically have a link back to your site. Because at the moment, we can put all our products, uh, we can pin our services, our tutorials and such, but at the moment, we cannot sell directly on Pinterest. We cannot sell that product or our service or our other goods. We still have to sell on our website. I mentioned that last month. You can't sell directly through Twitter. You can't sell directly through Facebook, through Pinterest. <laughs> Some companies can. They're trying. They're beta testing this. They're giving, for example, Amazon the ability that, yes, you can buy a product through a tweet. You can buy a product through a pin. But we're not Amazon level yet. So not all of us have this ability yet to have a buy now button built into our pins. Eventually we will, but not just yet. So we still want a link back to our website. That's where we're actually going to sell the product, have the newsletter, or whatever we're trying to accomplish online. So um, on our address bar, let's go back to Pinterest, just Pinterest.com. And what I asked earlier was uh, how many of you had a Pinterest account, and some of you raised your hand, and then when I, speci when I specified how many of you have a um, business Pinterest account, less raise your hand. So this is the thing. Similar to, um, in a sense, to Google Plus and to Facebook, where I said, uh, on those networks, we would create a personal account first and then a business account. We kind of do something like that for Pinterest, except that we can create directly a business account without a personal account. The trick is we do not create an account through the main screen here. We create a business account in the businesses screen. Do you see at the bottom, we've got a, bus a link for businesses? That's what we're going to do together. So if you previously created a Pinterest account for your business, but you didn't do it through the business screen, you don't have a business account. The problem with that is, <clears throat> technically, you're not following the terms of service of Pinterest. They want people to create a personal account, and they want businesses to create a business account. If you did it wrong, technically, you're in violation, and it could be shut down. They probably won't. But more importantly, what you're also missing is the ability to check analytics which is statistics. With a personal account, you don't get the same sort of statistics that you would as a business account. And statistics and data is very important for us on social media because we want to know, is this working? Is this money that I'm paying that social media marketer working? Or are they just kind of spending all day long watching cat videos on YouTube and nothing's happening on Pinterest? So if, if we create an account, which we'll do together right now, as a business account on Pinterest, you will get those insights. You'll, you'll be able to see what were your most popular pins, who were your most popular followers, and days of the week, and all of this information. Because then that's very useful to determine, this is not working, let's stop that. This seems to be working, let's increase that. So if you currently have an existing Pinterest account that you thought that you set up as a business, we, we do have a way to upgrade that. You'll need to talk to me individually during the breaks to do that, but I'm going to assume right now that we don't have a business Pinterest account, so I'm going to go through the process of creating one right now. If you do already have one, you can either just you know, pay attention for the moment and then I'll help you, or you can create one just to see how it looks like from the beginning. You can delete the account, no problem, but I'm going to show you now to create this account as a business user. So you should go back to Pinterest.com. Let's click on Businesses at the bottom. 
question. If you have a business account, is there any way to tell by looking at it right now? We will be able to tell. We will be able to tell after we log in and we go to a certain screen. So at the bottom, click on businesses. So then it says, get discovered by millions of people looking for things to plan, buy, and do. Join as a business. Already have an account? Oh, look at that. Convert now. <coughs> Getting started, tools, success stories, buyable pins. That's what I'm saying, that we'll be able to set up pins where people can buy now. That requires that you've got products to sell or services and, and such. But there's information you can look at on your own. I'm not going to go into that really. There's a blog that is useful to read because the blog gives you tips and techniques straight from Pinterest themselves. Promoted pins. We can do that like we like we looked at Facebook. Facebook, we could pay a little bit to reach more people. Uh, I believe I mentioned it very briefly, but we can also do that on Twitter. We can tweet, we can promote tweets so that they reach more people. And then Pinterest also has that, the ability to promote your pins by paying some amount, which is in your budget, to reach more people. If you're just starting off, this might be a good thing to look into to invest a little bit um, to see about reaching more people. But we'll be talking about the free stuff first. So just a lot of information. That's fine. Uh, here, click on join. Join as a business. It's going to ask you for some information. Uh, an email address. This can be a Gmail address or an address of your business, doesn't matter. So if I've got, for example, sales at victor.com, that's what I would use. If I've got victor at gmail.com, whatever you want to use. It technically doesn't have to be your business email account. And right here, you're not creating an email address, of course. You are, you are telling them your email address to verify you to create this account. Add your email address. Add a password. This can be changed. All of this can be changed later. It asks for your business name. So here you want to add your business name as it really is spelled and such. Similar to Google+, Plus, we are not choosing our address, our Pinterest address yet. This is just the name of your business as it appears in Pinterest on your page. Yes? Um, looking for your recommendation, if I already have an account and I don't want to have any followers, I haven't been active on it, is it better to convert what's already existing, even if those pins don't necessarily apply to my business, or just start another business? I guess I'm ultimately worried that down the road are people going to be searching by my name? Well, that that really depends. Is is you are you yourself, you know, part of the face of your company? If you are, then it might be useful to have a personal Pinterest account as well as a business, whatever way you get traffic from people. But if not, if you're just behind the scenes and you don't want yourself personal to be part of the company, then maybe I would not use or delete that that personal one and just use the business one. So it is kind of up to you. It's a select the business type. So I'm going to use again my fictional Victor's Bakery. Uh, so what would fit in here? Let's see. Professional, public media brand, retailer, online marketplace. There's no real wrong answer. <clears throat> and you can switch these. But uh, I'm going to say mine's a local business. We also have other. If you have a website, this is optional, but again, the website is the minimum thing that you need nowadays. So you can change all of this later if it's not quite right, but right now we're creating this account as a business user. There's some terms and services here and a privacy policy. Again, uh, no one really reads them, but it's important to do once in a while. And it's just basically talking about you don't you're not you agree to not use Pinterest 
to harass people or for hate speech and all of those, all of those things. And so, uh, your content is your content and all of that. You're not infringing on copyrights. Click create account. So it says, hello there, Victor's Bakery. Pinterest helps you discover and save creative ideas. Let's get started by setting up your home feed. So these social networks have gotten pretty advanced because it used to be you create an account and it just drops you in and you're on your own. Nowadays, they really kind of guide you. Well, why would you care about this social network? How should you use it? How should you set it up? So one of the things that then is useful when you create an account brand new is to look at the sort of the tutorial, the quick tutorial or the, or the tour that it might give you. So um, I mentioned on the last month that um, Facebook is a publicly traded company, which means they're on the stock market. Twitter is publicly traded as well. LinkedIn is publicly traded. Yelp. There's a bunch of social networks that are on the stock market. You could buy stock in their social network. The thing about that, of course, means that when you're a publicly traded company, that means that you're beholden to your shareholders. So if you're going to please your shareholders, you have to do things that increase your profits and all of that. And as we've seen very recently with Etsy, sometimes it's not always a good idea to become a public company because their stock price has been terribly crashing recently because they have not been in meeting investors' uh, expectations. But Etsy itself is such like a, a cool, interesting, hippie kind of company that they are not that good of a fit to Wall Street. So it's almost like, why did you become public if you knew that Wall Street was going to be on top of you to be a Wall Street company? And I'm saying that because right now Pinterest is not a publicly traded company. It's not beholden to investors. People keep speculating Pinterest is going to be is going to go public eventually. You're going to be able to buy stock in Pinterest and become rich, just like Facebook, or maybe not like Etsy. So they're still showing signs, though, that they're moving toward that in these sorts of things that help brand new users care about the business. So let's see what we've got here. The first thing is it's going to tell you. Um, follow five interests. Pinterest would be a ghost town in the old days, maybe a year ago. If you created an account, it would be a ghost town because you have no connections. And you don't know, well, what's the point of Pinterest? I, none of my friends are here. What do I do with Pinterest? Again, we're using this as a business tool. But part of that, and other tactics we'll talk about, which come also from the other social networks, is, uh, I might not have said it this way, but uh, you, you give what you get. So if I'm on Twitter giving favorites, giving retweets, if I'm on Google Plus giving comments and giving follows, I'm giving on a social network, I'm going to get that as well. So here, if I follow interests related to my business, that'll expose me to people I would care about what my business is about. So I'm Victor's Bakery. Let's see what applies. Recipes apply, so I'll click to follow that. That's going to then expose me, not connect me with, with individual buyers, but it's going to expose me to people that care about that topic, and then we'll talk about gaining followers. But take a moment to see what five interests, more if you want, five interests relate to your company. It doesn't have to completely relate if it is somewhat tangential, like kids and parenting. I'll select that one because some of my baked goods in my company are, you know, kid-friendly. They've got low sugar and uh, happy stars on the cupcakes and such. So I can, uh, I can still uh, look at that interest. Let's see. Healthy eating. Some of our baked goods are healthy eating, healthy snacks, too. Nutrition. Desserts. So I think I've got a few. You can do more than five, and we can come back to this screen later. And if you don't see exactly what you're looking for, you do have a search on top. So what if I type here cookies? Look at that. Cookies, decorated cookies, chocolate chip cookies. People love cookies. So I can go with the topics it suggests to me, or I can search a keyword or two and find other topics, interests, they call them interests, 
to follow. The point is that of that is then I will be exposed to potential followers. I will be exposed to people that might care about my product or brand or company. Once you've selected a few interests, click Done. And then here it, it goes on to talk about, again, the social and social networks. This is Pinterest. It has hundreds of millions of users. But it also says, if you've got connections on Facebook, they might also be on Pinterest, because sometimes people use more than one social network. So if you connect your Facebook account, it will tell you these people are also using Facebook, which could be more potential followers. You've also got Twitter. If you connect with Twitter, it'll tell you these people on Twitter are also using Pinterest. Why not connect? Um, I won't do this just yet. If you want to, it's relatively easy. You just have to connect and add your password, but I'm going to skip this. You'll be missing out on everyone's latest projects and interests. That's fine. Skip. To share on Pinterest has become easier than before because now the you can add like a little uh, a little button, a little plugin, an extra little feature to your web browser. I'm in Google Chrome. It doesn't really matter which browser you're using, but it might tell you get the get the Pinterest browser button what that will help you do, we'll see later, is to share content on Pinterest faster. So if you add that, that's helpful. I'm going to skip it because I can show you we can add it later. I'll skip again. It says, without our button, you won't have an easy way to save. You still will be able to do it, of course, but they're just telling you do it this way for easy access. I'll skip. So based on these um, interests that I that I chose, it's then going to create a home feed, which is like the wall on Facebook, which is like the timeline on Twitter, which is like the the stream on Google Plus. They've all got different names, but their concepts are similar to show you stuff. So this is content that's appearing from the various users throughout Pinterest. And as we talked about last month, it's not a very good idea to try to get followers as soon as you create an account, because your account right now is not that interesting for people to, to want to follow. Remember last month we talked about, well, let's set up our profile a little bit more completely, maybe add some content, and then entice people to follow us. So we'll do that first. We'll take a break soon. But let's look at the screen here to, to customize our profile a little bit. We'll take a break, then we'll start to add content, then we'll start to try to get followers. So on the top right corner, you, have, you should have the name of your company and this little speech bubble with uh, some pins on it. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that a little later. But click on the name of your company there, on the top right corner. That takes you back to your profile. And currently, if you notice the address, my, my custom Pinterest address is pinterest.com slash victorsbake0244. I don't like that. I want to change that. We'll see how in a moment. You may get a pop-up that says collect pins on different boards, make a board for each thing you're into, recipes to try, places to visit, whatever inspires you most. So again, organization. Uh, we'll get to that, of course. And to me, it's telling me at the top, don't forget to confirm your email. You'll get the most access to Pinterest once you confirm your email. So in a moment when we take a break, you should confirm it, but we'll get there. Um, so my profile is pretty barren. Why would someone follow this? There's no content to show off. There's no information what's Victor's Bakery, where are they located. So on the top right, do you see an Edit Profile button? Click Edit Profile. 
Here's where you can change your business name if you misspelled it or, or, or want to change it. It's right there. You want to add a picture of your business as soon as you can. I don't have a picture handy, but uh, when you get home, you want to add the company logo or whatever you want there. Username. There's the address. I don't want Victor's Bake 0244. I want Victor's Bakery. So you should be able to change that there. Unfortunately, it does not tell you if it's taken until you click Save. So before we do any of this other stuff, change it, click Save, and then it'll tell you if it's taken or not. Oops, username already taken. So don't worry about adding the bio stuff yet until you've chosen a good username. I'm gonna call this My Victor's Bakery. That, that one worked. Let me go back to edit. Uh, so on that address, you cannot add spaces. You cannot add apostrophes. You cannot add, not add those special characters. I think you can add underscores. Let me confirm. I'll do Victor's underscore bakery. It's already taken, but it let me do it. Yeah, you can do underscores. Let's see, can we do dashes? There's a limitation on how long your, um, your, your name can be. It says 3 to 15 characters. So if you've got something really long, longer than 15, you'll have to choose a shorter name. And notice it's telling me I can only use numbers and letters, underscores too, but numbers and letters. All right, so what we'll do is, on this screen here, based on what you learned last time, and I'll give you a synopsis in a moment, based on what we learned last time, take a moment to fill in your about to you, about the company, and a location, which is San Diego, Los Angeles, whatever, and then click Save. What I said last month about an effective about you is to think about how specific you can explain yourself. If I've got a company called Victor's Bakery, it's pretty obvious what this company is about, a bakery from Victor. But I can still be specific in saying family owned bakery in Eastlake, California, specializing in old world recipes with a healthy twist. I'm thinking about what would a person might what would a person possibly search for in Pinterest or on Google or Yahoo Bing. What would they be searching for that I provide? So my company is about we're a bakery. That's obvious. But we're family owned. Therefore, we're reaching a demographic that cares about that. Uh, down home, family owned businesses. Um, I've got here a location, which I can also add there. But within this field, I've also got that we're in Eastlake, that we're in California. So people that are local also could find us. And we've got old world recipes, where there's a keyword recipe, and we've got the keyword healthy. So we do have a limit here. It doesn't seem to tell us until we try to save, but 160 characters. So we have 160 characters to explain ourselves, so a little bit more than a tweet, to explain ourselves what we are about. And if you've got a name that's a bit more esoteric, like PMD Interactive, I don't know what they're about. I can't really tell by the name. So I definitely want to use that About You section to explain what the company is about. You're not just going to feed a list of keywords here. You're going to write real sentences for people when they search uh, to be able to find you. And if you've got a website, there's a process to confirm your website, which is a little more complicated than I can get into. But uh, confirming your website is useful because then when people visit your profile, they will then see a little check mark that says, this is the, uh, this is the official Pinterest account of this website. And again, it's a little 
technical to do it, so if you do choose to do it, there's going to be a little bit of instruction here. If you need to do it individually, I can help during lab time and such. But if you've taken my SEO class, for example, this should seem familiar. If you haven't, then again, during the, during the lab, I can help you. But what you want to do right now as we take our break, you want to fill in this profile as completely as possible. This is one of the steps we want to accomplish, one of the ground floor steps that we want to accomplish to then start to get followers. It's about... Uh, it could be a conflict in that we are in specifically East Lake, which is a suburb of San Diego. Um, here I'm kind of hitting two birds with one stone. Anyone that is looking for San Diego businesses, and then specifically East Lake businesses. So it's not going to be a conflict that Pinterest won't allow it. It's just that I want to target a few more people by saying it slightly two different ways. And technically, this can be anything we want. We can say simply California. Or even as close, even as detailed as 900 Otay Lakes Road, Chula Vista, East Lake, blah, blah, blah. I can even put an address here. All right, so 10.45, let's take our first break. We'll be back at 10.55, 10 minutes. What we want to do during the break is take a moment to edit your profile here. We'll go on in a moment. And then also, if you are new to the class, you want to make sure that you enrolled in the class with the stickers. If you're not sure that you did, see me and we'll enroll you properly. And also make sure you printed your name legibly on the sign-in sheet. That everyone did. So let's take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 10 45. If you need any help, call me over.